Okay, you ready? Let's do it. You're listening to Chats from a Chair with me, Nick Dempsey, coming to you from my wheelchair. I speak with people who have a great story to tell, portraying the human potential, often in the face of adversity. Check out the Instagram page at chatsfromachair underscore podcast and let me know who you think I should have on and have a chat with. Also, don't forget to hit follow on whatever platform you're listening to this. But for now, sit back and enjoy this episode. Coming up in this episode, I speak with world-renowned photographer Jared Sang as he shares how he was able to turn a hobby into a career. Jared recounts some of the amazing adventures he's been on, an exciting project he's now working on, as well as sharing some life lessons that he's learned along the way that we can all take into our own lives. So stay tuned for all of that and more. Okay, I've got with me here Jared Sang. Mate, thanks for coming on. How are you going? Thanks for having me, man. No worries. We worked together on a on a shoot a while ago, and I remember I was asking you questions, and it was so fascinating to hear about <laughs> photography. And I thought, why don't I just get you on the potty? So here we are. Here we are. Um, awesome. Let's get stuck into it, mate. Um, yeah, p- professional photographer, crazy life. I see you living living on Instagram, but before we get into all that sort of stuff, what was life like for you before? Like, where'd you grow up? Do you have any siblings or? Yeah, so I I was actually born in a place called Newman, which most people wouldn't know where that is. It's a mining town in uh, kind of northern WA. Um, but then I grew up in Mandurah, which is an hour south of Perth, which is, you know, Perth's pretty small anyway, and then Mandurah's even, even quieter. Um, three siblings. Yeah, just pretty pretty normal kind of childhood. But then I, I when I went to uni, I moved to Perth, and that's kind of where I started getting into photography there and i didn't study photography i studied law um for a year and uh, it, it wasn't that fun <laughs> really. didn't, didn't love it uh, <laughs> only lasted a year doing war, law yeah <laughs> and like it was i mean it's pretty tough decision because when you're that young you don't really know like you're so scared about every kind of major decision like that but i just was having the worst time and i just thought to myself if if being a lawyer is anything like the kind of stuff I'm having to read oh, <laughs> in these okay. textbooks, then <laughs> I can't imagine it's going to be a happy life. <laughs> if no. This is my life from now on. <laughs> so I left that. And I still studied uh, arts and, and uh, kind of marketing. But on the side, I was doing a lot of creative things like playing music and then started taking photos and eventually it, it just was it's like too, you know yeah this is actually fun and um maybe i'll try explore those things instead of what i'm actually studying <laughs> yeah no i um <laughs> i dropped out of uni twice so i'm with you oh, i'm amazing. with you there yeah. don't worry we're the same <laughs> <Exactly>. <laughs> yeah, um, if you look at my um kind of uh, i can't remember what you call it but like your, your kind of grades or results sheet thing yeah because it kind of lists all the things you've dropped out of as well. <laughs> My list is so massive. I used to just start something and be like, nah, I just, you know, quit just before well, the deadline. Yeah. <laughs> I was, you got to try it to know, don't you? That's what, yeah. that's what I try to tell my <laughs> old man. He keeps getting to me. <laughs> um, nah, sweet, mate. And then what? So you just started, like you said, you were doing creative stuff on the side, but you just started taking photos or like, how'd you get into photography? It was, music was the main thing I was interested in back then. I was so into it. I was just, you know, try, uh, I was going to concerts every every week, uh, playing in a couple bands myself, writing about music. I thought I was going to be a music journalist back then. So I was just very involved. And then um, at some point, well, what, what happened was I was I used to be at all these concerts uh, to review them and I'd be at the back of, of the venue with a little notepad, um, writing down notes for my article. But then I'd, I'd always see this other guy, um, who was a photographer and he'd be right up the front with his camera and it would, he just looked 
I just got sick of like always looking at that guy and being like, <laughs> he looks like he's just has a way cooler job. It looks more fun. Like he, he's up close. Looks like less effort as well, to be honest. <laughs> and I was like, ah, like I, I want to try and like maybe I can do that job instead. And I kind of and he gave me like a lot of advice as well, which is great. And um, eventually, yeah, I just tried. It's a long story, but yeah, basically, just, I just started trying it out. You just kind of fell, <laughs> and, fell and into it, was, it a little it was bit. Fine. Yeah, and it was exactly what I thought. It it definitely was easier. <laughs> it was, yeah. yeah then trying to run. Yeah. yeah well, you said you hated writing and stuff at uni, so well, yeah. Um, yeah, exactly. I, I like I like creative writing. Yeah, but, you know, it, it is effort, especially when you're reviewing concerts. There's only so many ways you can kind of describe, you know, a yeah. show. And then yeah. with photos, it's like it's just there already, there for you. You just Basically, you just you just click the button. <laughs> so, how long ago was that? You decided to pick up a camera and give that a go. That was around. Oh, it it would be fourteen years ago, I think. <laughs> yeah, right. And then yeah, it's so been a while. Was it instant? Like you loved it, fell in love with it straight away. Or was it a bit of a grind at the start? Or? The music stuff, just instant love. It's just yeah. so exciting. It's just like a kind of a spectacle in front of you and it's just you don't really have any control over it. So yeah. You just kind of capture it in the best way you can. And I really like that part of it. But but then to turn it into an actual full-time job, you do have, like, it's not going to always be fun like that. Um, and I started having, I started out doing like nightclub photos um, and a whole bunch of other things, but that was the first like job job I had was nightclub photos, and it was it was actually kind of fun. Maybe the first two nights, yeah. After <laughs> and then that. after that, I was like, "Oh man, this actually isn't that fun. This is pretty, <laughs> you know. People are just yelling at you. Everyone's so drunk, and like everyone wants their photo um, taken now. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it just it becomes a grind. I guess it's kind of like it's kind of like any kind of service job, I suppose, where people just look at you as like. You know, just this random worker that I can abuse. <laughs> yeah. Use as they want. Um, yeah. <laughs> but don't like it, like all that, all these kind of, you know, grindy jobs I, I did in the beginning, actually quite thankful for them now. I mean, I, I did this nightclub stuff like two years nearly, and it does kind of just teach you how to like put up with things and, and grind stuff out and just get the job done and deal with people. Like all those kind of things, you just got, you just develop a, a method to it and i i think that has helped with everything else since yeah yeah of course so you once you started doing that sort of stuff and started the photography from there was it that became the dream to be able to do that professionally yeah um and not necessarily nightclub photos but just all different types just you know i, I just started finding that you know once you get your name out people just start inviting you to take photos of different things and it was just a really interesting way to well, I guess explore different industries or, you know, because it could be anything that anyone wanted me for. And I just find myself in really weird situations or, or in some, I don't know, just at some event that I never thought I'd be at or yeah, like you just get thrown into so many different situations that just because you have a camera in your hand that, that you'd never experience otherwise. So that, that became like the drive and then it, started turning into travel became the drive and it just was a way for me to kind of um get around australia or or even overseas and um kind of opened up the world to me just just by taking photos yeah that's so cool to be able to turn something you enjoy doing anyway and it opens up so many opportunities for you that that's so sick i'm sure that's lots of people's dream so at what stage did making it a career and yeah going full-time what stage did that become like a real possibility I reckon about, it was pretty quick, maybe two years in from it just being a side thing because I was still at university. I had another job um, working in the office of like an arts organization. So still kind of in the industry. So all that stuff was going on. And then maybe two or three years in, the opportunities just started coming to me and especially travel ones. And it was pretty obvious that I have to kind of make a choice soon that you know, if I actually want the photography thing to be a proper thing, I'm going to have to drop everything else. Uh, and that was a pretty hard decision to make. But around that time, I'd, I'd started making friends with musicians that I was traveling with. And especially one guy called Stu Larson. And he has a very like nomadic life. And 
I remember <clears throat> some chats with him that really kind of pushed me to just do it. But he was saying like, you just gotta, you just have to do it. You know, what's going to happen if, if it doesn't work out, you can just go back to the office job and uni and everything, <laughs> you know, nothing crazy is going to happen if you try and it doesn't work. And I was like, yeah, you're right. Just give it a shot. We'll see what happens. Um, yeah, it worked out. It worked out. Yeah, I think it's such a good lesson that, that a lot of people can probably take. I've, I mean, I try to do that as well. I always say I'd rather try something and it not work out than to wonder what would have happened. So, I mean, I guess some people aren't in a position where they can do that always. But for those that can, yes. it's a, a great way to be able to do it. Um, and look, it works out sometimes. Sometimes it doesn't. But Yeah. Yeah, like you said, it's not a possibility for, for everybody. Um but I guess I could recognize that it, the privileged position I was in was, you know, just young guy, just, just kind of at the tail end of university, um, no real obligations or commitments to, to anyone else. So, you know, it was like now's the perfect time just to try something. Um, harder now, like, yeah, I think as you get older, it's harder to just, it'd be hard for me to just try something random right now, now that I'm settled and have, a mortgage and, <laughs> and all these other things. Go back to music writing. Or something. <laughs> yeah. How have you seen the like use of social media and and that play a role in in your sort of career? Was it did you gain a bit of a following on say Instagram first and jobs came from that, or was it vice versa? Or how did how did that play out? Or how have you been able to use social media? Yes, yeah, social media was like when I just was starting. Facebook was the one. Um, and I had quite a big following on Facebook, my Facebook page and my strategy and coming back to all the nightclub stuff, my strategy was just to kind of be, be everywhere, be the guy in Perth that took photos and have my name and kind of link to my page at the bottom of every photo. So like all these nightclub shots, you know, you'd have at the bottom, like photo by Jared saying link to his page. And so I was just doing all, all sorts of things, just nonstop, really grinding it. And eventually, you know, people just, just knew, knew me as the guy to get <laughs> for any kind of photos. And then Instagram started um, getting really popular as well um, around that time. And it was pretty early on and there weren't that many people on Instagram and, this, and especially photographers. So it was a cool little niche that I had. This is maybe 2014, 15 kind of era. And it was very new and businesses and, and especially tourism boards were starting to kind of latch onto the idea of using social media to promote things. So there was, a, there was a real golden period there, maybe between 2014 and 16, where I just get invited to so many different things, travel related, um, just because social media. And my Instagram, so way back in the day, this is so far back, but um, Instagram, the actual Instagram page used to, oh wait, yeah, they used to feature people every now and then. And if they featured you at the same time, they would put you on this suggested list, which is when you first get Instagram, when you first sign up, there's a whole list of people that they suggest to follow. And so they would put you on that as well and then like make a post about you. And they did that to me twice, way back. And each time they did, like my followers went up by like 30,000 or something like that. Oh, so that was a real boost at the start. <laughs> I feel like all of, of those 30,000, you know, people now, I, I think they don't exist anymore or like, <laughs> I, I think it's just a, like a random number that's been added to my page now. And that isn't really that real, but at the time it was, it was felt good getting, getting the kudos from yeah, the official well, Instagram. <laughs> yeah. I'll put a link to you Instagram and all that for people that want to see it because the photos are insane. But yeah, to be able to use that, I guess like a new thing coming in that still is so wild how it's sort of taken over the world and job opportunities can come from it. But I guess to be able to utilize that side of it is a great tool to be able to do with something like photography that can be right there and give people that that instant I don't know, oh, not gratification, I don't know what the word is for it, but instant sort of hit that they want and at least gives your yeah. work you're doing a bit of, you know, it's getting to people and people are enjoying it. Yeah, 
it's good. Like I think every, I was going to say every photographer, but probably just every person has a bit of a love hate relationship with things like Instagram. Like, like you said, on the plus side, you can just get your work out to everybody across the world, like no barriers there. But then, I mean, there's a lot of downsides as well. <laughs> you know, it starts, um, yeah, like everything kind of gets valued less and less the more that is on there. Um, it's like hard, hard to kind of stand out. Um, yeah, and everyone starts becoming a bit of a slave to the algorithm. So um, I think it was perfect timing for me when I first started um, because it was new and it was exciting. And social media now is, I don't love it. It's just, it's just there as a part of it. <laughs> yeah, there's definitely pros and cons. If it's used in the right way, like for things like this can be good, but it can also mm. definitely be taken the wrong way. But um, you spent a year traveling and taking photos uh, was it a couple of years ago now, I think, but um, did you just decide to do that or was that part of like a job or yeah, what brought that on? Well, I'm like, I don't, I've never like just taken a full like year off just to like travel and take photos, oh. but some years do feel like, like a, us, a, a usual year, I will, I will be on the road for maybe seven, 60 or 70% of it. Um, right, yeah. So yeah, so my usual work is well, a lot of my time gets taken up by touring with musicians, and if someone has a world tour, then that's you know that's half your year out just traveling with them. Um, but I also do a lot of tourism work, um, and something I did a really big job for Tourism Australia a couple of years ago, and that was nearly the whole year as well, just on the road, right. just um, photographing and capturing different destinations. Yeah. Okay. Well, what out of all those some of the places you've traveled what's um because i know you've been to what sahara desert antarctica all these different amazing places is there one that stands out more than others tricky one tricky one i think the easiest answer for me is iceland um just because it was one of the first places i really um just got immersed in in a new like landscape and i started shooting there quite a lot and then started running photography workshops there and sometimes I'd be going going back to Iceland maybe four times a year it's just so amazing so I'm going to say Iceland um, but there's so many other places as well um, Antarctica was really special but kind of in a, in a different way and I love I love being in, in deserts as well so Morocco earlier this year in the Sahara Desert and some places in Africa have been really Nice. I guess the common thread is that just that really isolated remote places. I, I, that's that's really what I enjoy. Yeah. Okay. Well, so what about Iceland stands out for you the most? Is it? I mean, I've heard it's a very beautiful place, but is that pretty much just it? Just great to photograph. Yeah, and like amazing to photograph and really surreal. And I sub maybe part of it is coming from Australia because if you if you are already in a place that was snowy and icy maybe it's not that amazing to you but to me <laughs> and i guess to yes. australians um just you know just driving past and seeing a massive frozen waterfall you know <laughs> on, on the left um, oh, really? like this iceberg that's... lagoon yeah that's the other thing there's so many amazing things that are really quite accessible it's not like you have to hike to them there's like there's maybe a car park and you and and like you know, hundred meters away, there's just this amazing thing, and that's all around the country. Um, and I love winter scenes, you know, I love frozen things, and uh, that's really special to me. And uh, sorry, obviously the Northern Lights. That's the, that's the other big thing. Um, being able to see the Northern Lights is such a crazy thing. People there are amazing. Um, yeah, it's everything about it. Like I don't think my I actually have a friend that lives there now. He's an amazing photographer called Benjamin Hardman. He's he's a Perth boy as well, but he ended up just we used to go there quite a lot together, and then he ended up just living there. He lives there now and is just Arctic Lord. <laughs> I don't know if I could be in the cold for that long, but <laughs> he loves it. <laughs> yeah, get back over here, defrost for a little bit, then get back over. But no, mm. that's so cool. Mm. I, would, I guess it's like they probably say about living in Australia, and I suppose like where I am on the Gold Coast in particular, you take these best beaches in the world for granted 
kind of thing. I suppose it's the same if you're living over in yeah. Iceland. Maybe you take all those. You know, they'd probably come over here and be like, "Oh my god, the beaches are amazing." Um, have you had any shoots that you've done, or like any? I guess people in particular you worked with, where you've had a real like, "Holy shit, I've made it" kind of moment, or do I can't believe I'm working with them. Sort of <laughs> Other than the one you did, with, other than one you did with me, obviously. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah that, I was a bit starstruck on that shoot. Um, yes, yeah. you can tell. But yeah. <laughs> I have to think of some other ones. Um, Ed Ed Sheeran was probably a, a big one. Um, oh shit! Yeah. Right. So I work with a musician called Passenger a lot. Um, traveled with him for maybe ten years, and he's a UK musician. Um, and he's best friends with Ed Sheeran and Ed actually used to support him at, at pubs and things back in the day. And then Ed just became mega oh, yeah. famous <laughs> and then Ed returned the favor and was like, you know, invite, inv- always invites passenger to be support actor at like massive arenas now. So uh, I, when they toured together, I, I, you know, got to travel and, and get to know Ed as well. And he wasn't super massive when I first met him, but very quickly, just became a superstar. Um, so yeah, getting getting to be around him and and work with him is like you always got to yeah kind of keep it in check. You know, you're kind of fanning out a bit, but um, you gotta be like yeah yeah just just be cool, just be cool. <laughs> yeah. Is he just as like sort of chill and that as I, as he seems like just normal? I guess he's super chill and. Um, there was something that happened like really early on. So I, you know, we shot a video together, maybe the first time we met, just done a few little things and maybe it was like a couple hours of hanging out and that was it. And then maybe two years later, I ran into him again and he just came up to me and I was like, Jared, how you been? I was like, how in, how in the world do you remember my name? And who, I know who I am. And then from that moment on, I was like, like, what a guy, you know, he would meet hundreds of people like every week. And just for him to just kind yeah. of like remember like people he's worked with. And, and, and I was like, that's really cool. That's really cool. Um, that's not wait, I just, I just remembered like a, 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 a better, like what the hell moment. Okay. Go. Um, so I also work with Angus and Julie Stone and, and Dope Lemon, which is Angus's other project. Um, and he became friends with Post Malone. Uh, and that's not even the the guy I'm talking about. But <laughs> so we're at the we were at the Post Malone show. They did a song together. Then we went um, backstage in the dressing room, just hanging out. And then out of nowhere, um, Dave Chappelle comes in. <laughs> and then yeah, I, I only got to talk to him for like two seconds, but like shook his hand and said hello. And like to me, that that was like a whoa, okay. <laughs> this is this is getting pretty wild now. The kind of people that I'm running into. Oh, there's some really rubbing shoulders. The thing is, no phones, no phones were allowed in that room, so I have no photographic evidence of this ever happening. <laughs> but take your word for it. Take your word. Yeah. <laughs> um. Yeah, that's that's sick, man. That's it's so cool that I guess starting from where you were doing the music writing to then where you are now, rubbing shoulders with those people, I guess. Glad you dropped out of uni. Um, you were also invited to uh, do a TED Talk. How did that come about and how was that? That was cool. That came about, yeah, earlier this year. Still waiting for the video to come out. It's been about six months, but I, I trust that one day they'll <laughs> release the video. But I just, I just got invited to, um, to talk about something for like a 15-minute speech. Um, yeah, it, t- it took me a while to kind of figure out what 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 – I could talk about, I've spoken, you know, at a few places and different, you know, about different things. And, and usually I just would talk about kind of some life lessons that I've learned through photography and through little situations that have happened. Um, but for this Ted talk, it needed to be quite a, like a one idea, one coherent idea. And so it took me a while to think about it. Um, and I just started thinking about, you know, the different experiences I've had where you know maybe I've learned something or maybe there was a breakthrough moment and I can't just start writing them all down and then I realized that oh the thing that they had that all of these moments have in common is that it was a moment that was 
not very comfortable for me. Like it wasn't a great time. <laughs> uh, they're not where the stories come from. This, all the stories have come from when something I'd expected has happened or something didn't work out the way I wanted or I had to force myself to do something that I didn't really want to do. Um, those kind of moments are where, you know, something clicks for you, I think. So so my talk was on, um, there actually isn't a title for it yet, but uh, the working title <laughs> was, was always um, Seeking Discomfort or Embracing Discomfort, I suppose. The idea being that, you know, it's going to be pretty uncomfortable at the time, but later on you'll probably look back at, at the moments where something didn't go to plan and realize that that was actually quite an important thing to happen to get me to where I am today. Um, so there's like, there's all, all kinds of these things, um, that have happened. Nothing like nothing super crazy, but, um, just, you know, uncomfortable in different ways, you know, whether that's just being stuck in really bad, rainy, foggy weather, like on a mountain and, you know, trying to tough it out and, and decide that, you know, make the decision to stay or leave those kind of moments. Um, and that's one of the ones I talk about in a thing where like, it, it, you know, I was, we were all waiting for this, uh, amazing moment to reveal itself and the fogs to part. And, and this was in Italy in the, in the Alps and, but it was just so, it was so depressing and we, you know, maybe there for like five or six hours and just, just seeing nothing because it was like cloud covering the entire view that we were supposed to see and then the sun starts going down so it's getting dark everyone's left it's just me and like this other this other couple there um and just kind of pushing it to the very last second before giving up and then just for a couple minutes this like the fog the the fog just parts and you just like the, the most amazing view you've ever seen for maybe two minutes <laughs> and then oh. I got the, you get, you get the shot and then, right. you, and then you get home and you're like, man, that, that was worth it for, you know, just sticking it out and just, and just realizing that, you know, the, the, every, every second longer you just stay there, like is, is another chance. It was another second that someone else has given up and said, ah, oh, that's enough. Um, and so just being able to kind of, stick it out and that and that's like a pretty trivial you know moment really just waiting for a photo but the the broader kind of guidance you know that philosophy can can give to the rest of your life i think is is pretty cool you know just the harder something gets the more uncomfortable something gets it, it means that other people like are, are probably giving up around you so you know the longer you can stick it out the more chance you will get the opportunity or, or get this amazing thing that other people have already left and missed out on. Yeah. That's such a, like you said, that when you say, Oh, it's just for a photo or something like that, you can, I mean, it down plays it a little bit on, on your hand from what it, but like you said, <laughs> the message to actually take, the message to actually take from it is, is what's important to, um, yeah, mm. there's, like you said, sticking it out to, to get push yourself to that uncomfortable position and then be rewarded for it is, yeah, a, a, another thing that I guess many people can probably take into different parts of their life and apply apply to so many different areas because that is, yeah, definitely one thing that I suppose I could probably take as well <laughs> right after this that, you know, it's too easy to <laughs> give up sometimes and that might make you give up the next time as well. But if you push it out and get rewarded for that, then it'll, it'll give you that encouragement to, to keep doing it. But that's the cool thing about photography, I suppose. You know, there's all these little things that have happened and um, lessons learned that are cool lessons just in the world of photography and creativity. But if you kind of broaden it out, it, you know, you start just learning all these life lessons um, that go beyond just photography. And, um, and that's cool. And that's what I love about what I have been able to do um, because yeah, I don't know. I don't know what life would have been like if I um kept doing the law degree or, or, or you know went into finance or something like that. I'm sure it would have been fine, and I would have made the most of whatever you know that pathway gave me. But this one, what has been good is just yeah, yeah, just 
just the the situations and and randomness of it just has made life really interesting. Yeah, well, that's what I was going to ask. What you love most about your job, I suppose, your job in photography in general. But is is that what you think it would be that sort of freedom and randomness of it? I think so. Um, earlier in the career, it definitely was the travel that was a big driving factor, and why I loved it because it just it gave me you know a, a, a way to just explore all these different places at mostly as jobs as well. So, you know, someone would be paying me to go, you know, visit South Africa and promote that. So at, at the beginning, that was amazing. Um, but now, yeah, in general, just, just, uh, I've appreciated how many different kind of sides to life and, and different people that I've met, um, and people I know like around the world, um, it's all really been through photography. So I think it's been, uh, yeah, just, I've just been able to have a really broad experience of different things, um, in little ways. Yeah. And I, who knows, like, yeah, uh, I guess the downside, if you have to flip side that is that, you know, uh, maybe in depth, I haven't experienced a lot of things. <laughs> just, I've just, been to so many different things all, all around the world on a surface level. Um, and I guess at some point you do feel like a, a, a bit, um, I don't know, that you don't have st- as strong roots like at home that someone else might have. But I like it. I like I like the, <laughs> the way everything's turned out for me so far. It suits you. It suits you. Yeah, what you're doing now. <laughs> That's good. But yeah, probably not for everyone, is it? Traveling around doing this sort of thing, but suits you. That's that's good. Yeah, definitely. Like at the, at, at the start, I used to think, you know, wow, like um, like everyone else is missing out if they're not like getting to travel as much as I am. But like now, I've realized, you know, it's, it's not for everyone, and and to some people, that's the last thing they would want to do. <laughs> you know, go weeks and weeks, you know, living out a suitcase or never being home. Um, and now I kind of have the freedom now of, you know, I can, I've established myself quite well, so I can kind of just choose, pick and choose, you know, um, stay at home and just work on commercial things at home or take travel opportunities or, or, and and that's the cool thing is being able to, for example, the shoot that we met, that was, that was a really cool one to be a part of and up in Gold Coast. So it's a nice, nice chance to just, you know, visit and and work on a cool campaign and just you know catch up with friends over there it's it's really nice yeah that's cool it gives you so many opportunities to travel around get around get a bit more warm a bit more cold places <laughs> it's a bit everywhere <laughs> but what's um what's what's next for you on the list then anything you haven't done that you want to do or do you just kind of play it day by day see what happens see what opportunities you get given yeah like it's been it's a bit like that but i have a few things yeah, I always open leave leave everything open to kind of opportunities coming through as much as I can. So I'm never too worried if the calendar looks a little bit empty or there's no jobs coming through because I just I just know that stuff stuff just happens. You know, someone just it, it could just be like one email and then suddenly three months of your your year is gone <laughs> on this project. Um, but in the background, I I do have a few personal projects that I I really want to get going properly one of them is a photography course um i've been you know kind of writing and and working on that because i really love teaching and just explaining photography to to other people in in kind of my own way and that's really fun so i want to you know work on that and the other personal project i have is a portrait series called the story of scars and so what that is is uh, I've, I'm taking portraits of uh, all people all around Australia really, um, who have a scar of some sort, and just learning the story behind it, you know, and and what happened and what's been learnt from that experience, and that's been a really rewarding project for me. It's it's you know just uh, there's a lot of and it could be anything, you know, there's stories of resilience and um, inspiration, but also sometimes it's just like a funny story. Um, and I just love the idea that 
everybody has scars of some sort. Most people do. Um, and you always remember, you know, what what that experience was. And, you know, more often than not, it's probably not a great experience um, <laughs> that, that, that you want to be reminded of. But um, it's just really interesting talking to, to people who've, who've gone through some things and, and what it's taught them. And a lot of, a lot of people um, have said to me that, yes, it was probably the worst thing that's ever happened to them. But if that didn't, then this thing wouldn't have, wouldn't have happened or this, their character wouldn't have been built in this way. And so they can't um, really look back and say, I wish it didn't happen because um, then all these other things wouldn't have. So yeah, that, that's, that's a personal project and I've been, I've been working on and um, uh, I hope, I hope uh, when you say something that I, I haven't, something I, I haven't done before is um, publish a book and I'm really hoping that this Scars project eventually turns into a book. So yeah, it's, it's hard, it's hard kind of motivating yourself um, when there's not actually a job and no one's, you know, paying you to do it. And actually you're paying quite a lot of money yourself to do it <laughs> because you have to pay for travel and, and video people and producers and all, and all those things. So it's really hard to be like, oh, you know, let's work on scars because that, what that means is, yeah, just, you know, drain drain the money. <laughs> but it's such a cool, rewarding project that uh, I'm really going to try over the, really over the next year, I'm going to try to put a lot of effort into meeting a lot of people. And um, it's a great, sort of thing to focus on I think because I mean a lot of what I have on because I can relate to it a lot obviously with with my injury and, yeah. and what I went through mm-hmm. then and I think a lot of people we've had on a podcast on this one and the unaffected that I used to do a lot around disability or people that have had accidents of some mm-hmm. sort or, or, or something like a scar I suppose and a big thing they have in life is they get a completely different outlook and on on life and it gives them the kick in the ass to do something they wanted to do or just to realize how short life is and you don't know what's going to happen. So I always tried to say, you know, don't wait for one of these things to happen to you before you, before you do that thing you mm. want to do or change your perspective or, you know, people are just happier now. They don't let mm. the little things get to them as much because they've had this big thing. So I think it's a really cool project to sort of try to spread that message essentially. And I mean, doing it on a podcast and talking about it, maybe having that, photos there of a scar to people be like might just get to people a little bit more so i think i definitely definitely agree that that's a, a cool project that um yeah could positively impact a, a lot of people so yeah definitely put time into that one that's cool thanks man yeah and that's part that's part, a big part of the drive to do it is the the feedback that came so i've i've done the first part of it and calling it chapter one which was only 10 portraits um but I had some backing from Canon to to kind of complete that and film that. And the feedback from that, just that part of it has been really good, both from people viewing, um, saying, yeah, wow, like, you know, it's it's usually something you 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 don't think you can talk about with somebody. If I guess if you don't know them, you you, you know, you're not going to go up to someone and say, Oh, you know, what's that about? Um, so it's kind of broaching like an uncomfortable topic and just giving, giving like a platform for someone to just ex- explain their story, I suppose, if they want to. Um, and yeah, a lot of people have said, said they can relate to it. Um, and on the other side, the people who I photographed have said, some of them have said, you know, that's, that's kind of the first time I've talked really openly about what happened to someone that wasn't, you know, just my, my family. Um, and they said that's been a really nice experience too. So yeah, I really, I really hope to, um, to pursue that because like all this, all, you know, the stuff I normally do and the stuff that, you know, is, I guess, cool sounding to a lot of people, it's all the travel and the music stuff and everything. And that, that's really cool. But then, you know, you start thinking about, well, what, 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 you know, I've been given this opportunity and, and privilege to kind of be a creative person and you know what 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 can I actually offer you know to to the world and and beyond just taking pretty photos of 
landscapes you know that's really cool that i get to do that um but at the end of the day i don't think uh when i'm gone you know i'd I'd rather there's something more than <laughs> saying well he took a lot of cool photos of the mountains and <laughs> of this musician like <laughs> like that was cool but you know i think si- since i have the chance to do something that might have a bit more meaning and impact and that's something that uh, that's been i guess i guess as as my career has gone well i am able to kind of do these sorts of things where it doesn't have to be about a job or looking cool or anything like that they i do have the time and resources to work on something that hopefully has a positive impact and have some meaning to like a wider community um and it and not be yeah, you know, I'm able to do it. You know, I wouldn't have been able to do this ten years ago. You know, I just didn't make enough money. You know, to to be working on things that that weren't jobs. Uh, and now I do. So it's becoming more and more important to me to say, yeah, yeah, you've you've had some success, and now you know what can you what can you do with it? That's awesome, man. Yeah, that's like I said, it'd be a great message. That um, yeah, if you put the time into it, I reckon it's um, yeah, it'll definitely pay off. It's um. Yeah, I think that'll greatly impact a lot of people. But um, that's um, that's all I got for you today, man. Thanks, <laughs> thanks so much for coming on, having a chat. It's um, super, super interesting. Like I said, photography or just a sort of creative kind of lifestyle to turn into a job is is super interesting. That I suppose a lot of pe- people use or have photography as a bit of a hobby, but I speak to someone that's able to to transfer that into yeah, a career is um super interesting. So thanks for so much for coming on and um sharing all that. Thanks for the chat, mate. It was, yeah, it's re- really nice to to get get to sit down and and talk properly. You know, when we're on that shoot, we, we maybe had like minutes here and there to <laughs> to to get to know each other. Uh, but it's like shoot, shoot, shoot. So yeah, this has been awesome. No, that's sick, man. Yeah, I think I've each other asked you what um what camera to get for my potty. So that's um now you now you're featured <laughs> on here. Full circle. Nice. Full circle. <laughs> um, uh, awesome. Thanks, mate. Cool. Thanks a lot, man. Well, there you go. That was Jared Sang. Quite an amazing story, really, for a photographer to be able to turn what was, yeah, a hobby into a profession and some of the amazing adventures he's been on, traveling the world and and things he's learnt along the way that, like he said, that it might seem a bit trivial saying that, you know, you've learnt these things taking photos, but it's the lessons he's long learned along the way about how these rewards come when you make yourself uncomfortable. So I think they're lessons like, like that that we can all take into our own lives and it's very exciting hearing about the um, project he has coming up with Scars. So like I said, I will have his... Um, details tagged on the Instagram page at chats from a chair underscore podcast so if you want to check out his Instagram go there and you can find him but um, yeah that was that was a really interesting chat about something that I have absolutely no idea about so that was cool hope you enjoyed it as always if this episode or anything in life in general is getting to you then you can contact Lifeline on 13 11 14 please reach out to their services if if you need and Remember to check in on each other and that it ain't weak to speak. So please, if you need, reach out. Um, Otherwise, yeah, check out the Instagram page and find out who I've got coming on next and come back next time. Thanks.